The following is a presentation of The Day. Thanks for joining us on Live Lunch Break. My name is Rick Koster, and we are streaming as I speak at theday.com. We're pretty privileged today to have uh, a Rhode Island singer-songwriter named John Campbell, renowned internationally for his maritime music, uh, modern sea music, I guess I could probably say that. Very modern. Yeah, yeah and uh, he's played all over the world, so, wow. yeah, Oregon. Well, thanks for the hyperbole. Oregon, <laughs> that's all over the Alaska. world. Alaska. Texas, we're getting there, right? Oh yeah. Well, if you got those places, we you know really need. That's to global. Of, yeah. Um, already been signed for the Mystic Sea Music Festival. Not signed, but tapped. Well, yeah, you'll be there. Oh, uh, God willing. All right. <laughs> I hope you enjoy it. Here is John Campbell. Waiting for the camera to come around. So I thought I'd open up with this requested tune, legitimately requested, scant minutes ago. Now, there was a time when cities in New England, New Bedford, Stonington, even New London, flourished while the whaling industry was, was going good. Um, when that industry died out, like a lot of other American industries, so went some of these cities. But whaling has actually worse than died out. I think you could say whaling has tanked. So I was trying to think of an ecotourism way to bring back whaling and maybe restore a little uh, of the economy in some of these New England cities. And I'm afraid I'm going to end up in the world court if somebody actually does this. <laughs> It was iron men and wooden ships sailed from New Bedford town in search of the Leviathan down on the whaling ground to Pennsylvania oil and an electric light or two. Well, it's broached the whole damn industry and it's beached the whole damn crew. But now the shanty man is standing in the unemployment line and the whale ships, they sink in the mud just a little with each tide. So it's time to round those sportsmen up who are sick of catching trout And let them get a tingle As there she blows they shout Cause we're going whaling Catch and release Harpoon them with a suction cup And thus subdue the beast And we'll get our pictures taken Like all good anglers do And then release the suction and return them to the blue now you need some corporate sponsorship for ventures such as these So we'll phone up the Norwegians and we'll Skype the Japanese And if Cousteau and Greenpeace, well they try to shut us down They can chase us straight to hell cause we're Antarctic bound And we're going whaling, catch and release Harpoon them with a suction cup and thus subdue the beast And we'll get our pictures taken like all good anglers do and then release the suction and return them to the blue. Down on the Roaring Forties with Surfer Magazine. Well, they're giving Nantucket sleigh rides only up on water skis. And all the world's most extreme athletes in search of personal best. Well, they'll all climb down from Everest to take up Ahab's quest. Cause we're going whaling. Catch and release. Harpoon them with the suction cup. And thus to the beast, and if you are the fairer sort that in the sunlight burns, we suggest you just buy that hand-tied Orvis Jonah fly and kind of cast off from the stern, singing, Baby Beluga, Baby Beluga. Lose 
immerse yourself in the possibilities for your home, yard, heart, and soul. And see what we're building for you. Offshore, out in the sound, your island getaway awaits. Yes, Block Island beckons. With so much to do and see, a Block Island getaway is now closer than ever. Ride the high-speed Block Island Express from New London on one of four daily departures. Where an island escape is yours at GoBlockIsland.com. That's GoBlockIsland.com. So by doing the house and trade in, you know that we use that towards our, our down payment towards this um, condo, and uh, it made life so much easier for us. Um, it took all the worry out of everything. Thanks for joining us on Live Lunch Break. My name is Rick Coster, and we are streaming at thedate.com. You are eating lunch. We're not. We're listening to the fine sounds of maritime musician John Campbell. And uh, John has released four albums over the years, at least. Uh, been part of several others. A lot of artists in the maritime and folk music communities have covered his songs. Um, we were talking off camera. You threw a twist in at the end of Catch and Release, which is a song that's very popular of yours and what you started with today. Talk about how you keep material fresh. Does it just naturally occur to you to... Well, it does happen, you know. And it, everything's processed. I mean, I don't know, at one point I was going to write a whole CD for bad kids. <laughs> and I was going to call myself Riff Raffy. <laughs> 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 and, uh, you know, and then I said, you know, I mean, Baby Beluga is a terrific song to parody in any way you possibly can. Right. So it, I just stuck it on the end of, <laughs> of Catch and Release. It just seemed so natural. It did. You That's know, funny. Th things just happen. You well, you were talking uh, when we met you uh, earlier today of sitting in bars or music clubs or whatever and without the artist on stage being aware of it, they performed songs by you. What is that like as an artist when you're anonymously sitting there? I don't necessarily recognize them. <laughs> That's one that, problem. Is that good or bad? Well, I don't know. I mean, hearing it by somebody else is, a, is real revealing sometimes. I mean, everybody that, that picks up a song gives it, you know, out of necessity, brings their own flavoring to it, you know? What's the most flattering example of someone covering your work? Well, I think Tommy Makem covering one of my songs. Oh, he did it in kind of a William F. Buckley voice, which I thought was <laughs> pretty strange. <laughs> did he throw the vocabulary into? Well, yeah, yeah. <laughs> He's missing a couple of verses, which I I ran into him at the party after and got him squared away. Right. It was fun. I don't. You set him straight. Well. <laughs> no, it's funny. I, I I had written the verses out and I handed them to him, and he and he says, "You're the guy," because he'd never, you know, I'd never met him, nor had he ever met me. Right. You know, he just sort of found this song someplace and started doing it. And it was on one of his records. Yeah. So, when one of your songs ends up, not getting too personal here, but when on a record by somebody like Tommy Makem. I assume there's a royalty check involved that's not insubstantial. Well, I mean, you know, it's it's not huge. You're not going to, I mean, basically, right now, it's in the vicinity of nine cents a copy. You know, which if you're getting on a Michael Jackson record, <laughs> you know, you're buying a yacht. You know, you get on a Irish, you know, Irish folk record, you're probably not, you know, you're probably not buying a yacht. Let's hope that, you know, God bless him, Michael wasn't planning a, a next album before he died and, and he died. there was going to be garbage <laughs> garbage barge on it. I don't see it happening. Yeah. Would you play garbage barge? I'll, I'll take a run at it. All right, cool. John Campbell. This was a commission for uh, an NPR show. A guy called me up and said, do you remember that garbage barge deal back in the 80s? 87 or something like that. I said, I do, vaguely. I said, you know, as we were talking about earlier, let me Google it. 
So I looked it up, and I, I read the story, and the story was okay, but you really got to find a handle to hang a song on. So I'm reading various articles. Now, with every barge, there's a tugboat of necessity dragging this barge around. So the tugboat was the break of dawn. And then when I get to the captain's name, the captain's name is Duffy St. Pierre. So I called him back immediately, and I said, all right, I got a handle to hang this song on. I'll get back to you. So that's what I did. Um, then as you go, it's, this is sort of reportage, you know, kind of what happened on the adventure of this Mobro barge, you know, with a little stuff thrown in. I shipped on board the break of dawn in 1986, and it was either be a tugboat man or work at laying bricks. So I thought I'd skip the mortarboard and breathe some salty air. Spend a couple of years afloat with Captain Duffy St. Pierre. Well, life on board the break of dawn didn't pack a lot of thrills. We'd put anything on the tow rope that would help to pay the bills. So when we took that Mobro garbage barge, you know, it was just another job. A leak and reek and albatross, we were hauling for the mob. Well, we picked up that garbage barge up in Long Island Sound. And on the early morning tide, yeah, we were Carolina bound. Underneath the Verrazzano and stormy New York skies, just me and Duffy St. Pierre and 15,000 flies. Now, when we got down past Hatteras, where we were supposed to go, you know, the port of Moorhead City, they emphatically said no. Hey, we got 3,000 tons of garbage, so where are we going, guys? Said Captain Duffy St. Pierre to the 30,000 flies. Now it's next stop, Louisiana, where we'll drop this reeking raft, cause Mobile and Biloxi, they've already waved us past. Well, the barge, it was getting nastier as we got into the Gulf. Captain Duffy St. Pierre, he started talking to himself. And they waved us off in New Orleans and all down the Texas coast. Well, that barge was getting pretty ripe as it began to roast. You know, we got to drop this damn thing off, says I with bloodshot eyes. The Captain Duffy St. Pierre and a half a million flies. out two destroyers from sunny Mexico, and they escorted us with fighter jets as southward we did go. You know, and I felt just like some flying Dutchman with some tropical disease, as the break of dawn and the Mobro barge sailed eastward off Belize. You know, that we took pride in the break of dawn, and we kept a ship-shaped boat, but that Mobro barge out on the rope made us a super fun to float, so just Ask the ancient mariner who stoppeth one and three about Captain Duffy St. Pierre, a million flies and me. And now Duffy's on the radio and he's mostly screaming please till we finally got permission to head back to the Keys. You know, I was tempted to swim to Cuba as we went steaming by. Just me and Duffy St. Pierre and now at least two million flies. Five miles out from Key West, we were boarded by the feds. You know, they said this is just ordinary garbage, not toxic waste, they said. So it's back up on the Gulf Stream, and New York regains the prize of me and Duffy St. Pierre, and now at least three million flies. Back in Brooklyn, we dropped the tow line. We've been 6,000 miles or more, and we've been almost four months out to sea when we got back to shore. And with a hand that threw the monkey's fist, I gladly waved goodbye to Captain Duffy St. Pierre and every single fly.
offshore, out in the sound, your island getaway awaits. With so much to do and see, a block island getaway is now closer than ever. Where an island escape is yours at goblockisland.com. So literally, we're changing deeds. You're using your house at an agreed upon number towards a down payment for the purchase here. It couldn't be much easier, really. We believe in the art of handcrafted furniture. Workbench built in the USA to your specifications. The Cloder Farms Keystone Collection. Furniture handmade just for you. And see what we're building for you. I am sitting here laughing with John Campbell, the Rhode Island Maritime singer, songwriter. Uh, clearly, if you've ever seen him, and hopefully you have, he's got some great stories to tell. Sometimes he does it sitting here talking. Sometimes it's in the form of music. Um, a lot of the festivals and the style of music you play are more, uh, I guess you'd say, open to just spoken word. It, it's part of the whole uh, process or genre or whatever. Yeah. Um, I don't see, you see too many spoken word pieces at a heavy metal show and probably that's best. But, uh, I, that's an act of faith. I don't get too many of them. I, I'll, I'll take your word on it. Actually, I did. I used to do pyrotechnics for Kiss and Motley Crue. Are you kidding? Okay, which which one of those? Not to get away from the subject of a very great maritime artist here, but he did pyrotechnics for Kiss and Motley Crue. Which ones was more fun? Motley Crue is totally out of control. That's true. Kiss, right? Kiss is pretty much by the numbers, and yeah. half of them are ailing anyway. Yeah. You know. But uh, Motley Crue can bring it. Oh, we'll, we'll talk after. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. So this set, you're going to do a spoken word piece, and then you'll do uh, a song, right? Yep. John Campbell. This one, I, I, I go out and participate in this event called the Astoria Fisher Poets, which takes place in, uh, right on the coast, the mouth of the Columbia River in Oregon. And they have a poetry contest every year. They give you a line on Friday night or Saturday morning and everybody's got to have a poem ready by Saturday night and everybody gets up on stage and does them. Um, it's fun. So this was my entry one year. The line they gave us was, you might be missing fish. Now if your spouse is touting tofu and your doc says no more cheese and that steak, well that's just an avenue to arterial disease. And if it seems that you don't recognize even one thing on your dish, and you feel like you were missing out, well, you might be missing fish. And if your electrolytes are dimming and your omega's down to two, and you can barely drag yourself upstream to do what you gotta do, might be rampant speculation, might be rank hypothesis, but if your cylinders are missing, you might be missing fish. And if you've been corralled by herds of vegans, and each one has a beef, you've had it right up to the gills and you're craving some relief, Till it seems a sole solution might be six or eight big spliffs. What you need is some sushi shish kebab. Yep, you might be missing fish. Now there's a dumbing down of America from sea to windy plain, but where I'm from, we think that fish goes right straight to your brain. So for your SAT or your poetry or anything you wish, to be sure that you're not missing out, do not be missing fish. <laughs> I didn't get into the finals give you some idea of the caliber of the work out there. So this one I wrote a number of years ago. I happened to be sitting with a friend of mine who came over from Killaloo, Ireland when he was 14 to the Rockaways. And uh, we were sitting in Battery Park in New York and he looked out and he said, oh, that's when we flew in. That's the only thing that looked recognizable to me. So it sort of compelled me to write this song and it's kind of a good reminder, you know, that, you know, if you're looking down on recent immigrants to this country too much, in a way, a lot of people would be dishonoring their grandparents and great-grandparents, you know. So this addresses that maybe a little obliquely. <laughs> Uh, 
And once we were tired, the hungry and the poor, and in great huddled masses, we stood at her door. And she promised us property, shelter, and work. She's the prettiest girl in all of New York. Like no fragile flower, lovely or plain. See her winter and summer in the hot sun and rain. Yet she's the loveliest one of them all, all the same. And she took us all fairly, the last or the first. And she fed us and clothed us, and she saw to our thirst. Though she must have seen sights that would make her heart burst. Some at our best, and some at our worst. And like no fragile flower, lovely or plain, see her winter and summer in the hot sun and rain. Yet she's the loveliest one of them all. All the same And I've traveled to the north To the south and the west And though I stayed for a while Where I thought it was best I've not seen the like Though often I'd look Of the tall green-eyed girl With the torch and the book like no fragile flower, lovely or plain, see her winter and summer in the hot sun and rain. And yet she's the loveliest one of them all, all the same. And sometimes I forget, and I wish she was real, instead of made out of iron, out of copper and steel. Well, I'd have her come ashore And I'd bid her sit down It's been an awfully long time To be standing your ground So from out of the porthole Or from the seat of the plain See her winter and summer In the hot sun and rain And the prettiest girl In all of New York She welcomes me home again It's pretty clear that um, we had something to offer that other listings, other agents' listings did not have to offer. We offered them the opportunity to um, sell their home, get their home sold in a very slow, tough market. Come to Cloder Farms. Lose yourself in the possibilities for your home, yard, heart, and soul. And see what we're building for you. Offshore, out in the sound, your island getaway awaits. Yes, Block Island beckons. With so much to do and see, a Block Island getaway is now closer than ever. Ride the high-speed Block Island Express from New London on one of four daily departures. Where an island escape is yours at GoBlockIsland.com. That's GoBlockIsland.com. You're watching Live Lunch Break at TheDay.com. I'm Rick Coster, and I'm having a blast with maritime musician John Campbell, uh, <laughs> former boat builder, uh, master of and slave to meter and rhyme. We're discussing off the air Robert Service, the poet, because that spoken word piece you did reminded me of and that's high praise. That is very high praise. Uh, and that you did it in 24 hours just kills me. I it's couldn't mow the yard in 24 actually, hours. Actually, most of us are sitting there waiting to go on writing the poem. Yeah. But you know, if, you're, if, you've, if you've spent most of your life, and I'm now in my 60s, 
you spent most of your life rolling out the malarkey. <laughs> it's it's it becomes easier over time, you know. <laughs> I mean, you can almost do it at the drop of a hat. You know? <laughs> well, you, you do a you roll out a, a fine tarpaulin of malarkey. Yeah, you know? <laughs> a tarpaulin of a malarkey. Tarpaulin of malarkey. So say that when you've been drinking. I, that we'll actually ch the check one in about seven o'clock tonight. We'll see what sushi shish kebab is another one that's tough to say more than two or Which three one? times. Which one? Sushi shish kebab. Sushi, well, I was in a band for about two days that was called uh, Argyle Gargoyles, which was not easy to do. So if Argyle Gar Gargoyles played with Sushi Shish Kebab... Actually, you know, that's how that band, The Horse Lips, got named. Really? That Irish band. They were all so drunk, one of them was trying to suggest they name it The Four, the four Horsemen of the Apocalypse. <laughs> But it came out horse -less. That's a great band, by the way. I didn't, boy, you are drunk if you can't get those, those middle four syllables or whatever. <laughs> oh, yes, this is John Campbell and uh, with Rick Coster. And we could probably just sit here and do this all afternoon. But uh, I did want to, to touch again that you're going to be at the uh, Mystic Sea Music Festival. And you were suggesting... Unless they're watching. Huh? Unless they're watching. Unless they're... <laughs> <laughs> no, this this will help. But speaking of help, you know, it's about time I was there. I was there a couple of years ago, and I probably heard seven different performers doing my songs, and I wasn't booked. I was just. You know what? I hope you walk around with like a a checkbook sort of thing where you can give them an invoice every time they do that. <laughs> Say I'm from BMI or ASCAP, and you need. No, we're really uh, we're off the grid as far as a lot of that stuff I know goes. You, are. you know, this is folk music. We don't want. Some, I was just saying to somebody this morning, some days I get the ASPCA and ASCAP mixed up. <laughs> you sent an invoice to a collie for <laughs> songwriting talent. Um, anyway, you were saying maybe this will be the impetus for you uh, appearing at Mystic uh, C Music Festival to finish uh, oh, a record. Make another you CD, yeah, yeah before CDs become obsolete. Well, that's happening too, but yeah, get on it. Well, you know, People at people at Mystic and a bunch of these other festivals are great because they're very supportive and that they they really you know like to buy CDs and stuff like that. Right. And it really helps. They you know, support the artists. Yeah, I mean it's great. You know we don't when we book a place we don't necessarily get offered that much money. So sure. if you can do something off the merch table, yeah, that's that's a great thing. So I think it's probably reasonable to assume I should arrive at this summer and fall's set of shows with at least something fresh. Smart. You'd be smart. All right, so we got time for one more segment, and I'm hoping that John will do a song and maybe another one of your spoken word pieces. Okay. Excellent. John Campbell. I'm going to try out. I'm the, mar the, the maritime stuff is fun, but I came up with this song last year. I, I play with the Empire Review in Providence from time to time, which is this variety show that happens once a month. So I'd like to write for that. So they asked me to do the Valentine show. So I said, well, I'm going to do a Valentine song for people of a certain age who've, uh, you know, had a certain range of experience in the game of love and remain, you know, a little bit optimistic, but, you know, with a, a heavy dose of realism thrown in there. So this one's, uh, I wrote this one for, for that show, and it's called The Tarnished Valentine. There's a blue mailbox on the corner. I think they pick up every day. I had a stamp around here somewhere if it wasn't thrown away. Found this card up in the attic from back when she was mine. Now I'm standing at the window with this tarnished valentine. It's shown back up in my mailbox more than a time or two. No forwarding address or maybe too much postage due. Each time, a little worse for wear, it's long since lost its shine. 
do I dare to even send this out, this tarnished valentine? Cause each time I have sent it out, it's cost a whole lot more. Now there's tape across one corner, and it's been stepped on on the floor. It's peppered now with thumbtack holes where once it looked so fine. Wonder should I even send it out this tarnished Valentine? Cost a dollar forty-four down at the corner liquor store when love was still fresh and new. I stuffed it in the envelope with a lot of faith and a lot of hopes, thinking forever you'll be mine and I will always be true. There's a blue mailbox on the corner. They pick up once a day. I had a stamp around here someplace. Saw it just the other day. Now it's just a ratty greeting card that's long since lost its shine. But I meant it every time I sent it. This tarnished Valentine. Tarnished Valentine. So we'll we'll wrap it up. This uh, this poem commemorates the Sakonaquonset tribe, who in the dark days of the Second World War came to the rescue of our war effort and are trouncing the Axis powers by being the inspiration for this following structure, the Quonset Hut. You know, it seems to me your trailer homes, they mostly draw ten tornadoes, and your little shack down on the beach, it could float off in a hurricane -o. So keep your palm tree hut down at Sanibel or your igloo up in Nome, because I'm looking at a Quonset Hut. Now, that's a real well-rounded home. Now, you might not have an inkling at the onset, but you can make yourself a real good life in a plain old Quonset hut. Now, I don't need some fancy spread from some architect's exotica. I just want the kind of place that you can put up in Antarctica. And if it seems sometimes that the pace of life has gotten pretty hectic and you haven't been real comfortable since Dylan went electric, and if the cabin up in the piney woods just gives you thorough heebie-jeebies, well, you might need the kind of place you can get surplus from the Seabees. You know, they build so flimsy anymore, your house could almost fold up. Yep, you're better off with the kind of place that the weather can't get hold of. So, look around for a real short wife so the kids don't get too tall, and don't be surprised if all the pictures kind of hang out from the wall. And you might not have an inkling at the onset, but, but you can't hear diddly when it rains down in a Quonset hut. And I know you think this piece of work is mostly nonsense, but, You'll be galvanized when next you see the lowly Quonset hut. Thank you very much. <laughs> Fabulous. Okay, that was John Campbell, uh, a witty raconteur, a wonderful songwriter and musician. And it was so so great to have you well, today. Well, thanks. thanks. It was fun being here. Uh, yeah, yeah it, it live lunch break will take you in many places, and this was a treat today. So uh, next week... Daphne Lee Martin is uh, previewing her new CD, Moxie, and we're she going to... bringing in her whole band? She's got a new band. Not Craig Edwards and them anymore? Well, I'm not sure who's uh, going to be there, putting right. me on the spot here. I don't know. Uh, I'll find out. She's always got a good band. Uh, she's got a new CD, Moxie. We're actually taking this one on the road. Live lunch break will be at the Telegraph uh, on Golden Street in New London at noon, and everybody's welcome. Uh, so you that'll drag, be cool. You could drag all this gear over there? Actually, we have a, uh, a highly paid road crew. No, yeah, we're doing it. We will take all the gear over there. Um, thanks so much to New London Harbor Towers, the Block Island Express, the Guard Art Center, and Cloder Farms. As always, Tim Wood, Pete Whoppy. Should I, tell, should I tell people up my way about this? Yeah. All right. Yeah, you can. Uh, you guys got it right in the house. 
private concert today for Claire Bissett. Glad she's here, one of the day's fine reporters who just happens to love John Campbell. So she's got connections. And we will see you guys next week at Live Lunch Break on the day.com.